section 27 of up one pair of stairs of my book house this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by candace stalick dallas texas up one pair of stairs of my book house edited by olive the pure miller the nutcracker and sugar dolly stories by carolyn sherwin bailey how they came in the first place once upon a time there were an old peddler and his wife going to town to market and the peddler had a bag full of all sorts of nuts and the woman had a basket of eggs upon her head the day was warm and sunny and because the high road was so hot they decided to go through the woods a new way as they went they came to a beautiful shady path under the trees a path they had never travelled before on and on it went until it ended all at once at a wonderful garden a garden with a silver fence and a gold lattice gate all set with jewels and over the gate was written a name in letters the fairy honeymouth the lattice gate was tightly closed but behind it one could see gay flowers and hear beautiful birds singing loudly in trees all made of sugar on either side of the gate stood a great tree and one tree bore large green nuts nuts as large as hen's eggs and the other was a sugar tree dropping sugar plums down upon the path below we must go inside said the peddler dropping his nuts we must indeed said his wife setting down her eggs so they both climbed the lattice gate and dropped down on the other side although the birds in the garden sang loudly to them don't do it don't do it then the two buried their hands in the white sugar that filled the garden walks and smelled of the flowers that were all made of sugar and at last the peddler said i must have one of those great green nuts it would sell for more at the market than all the nuts i can gather in a twelvemonth don't do it don't do it called the birds but the peddler paid no attention to them he climbed the tree beside the gate and put one of the great green nuts in his pocket see what i have found called his wife who had climbed the sugar tree there in a nest lay a huge white egg we will put this egg under our hen whose nest is beneath the front stairs it will hatch into a wonderful fowl which we will sell for much money don't do it don't do it sang the birds but the woman took the large egg then the two climbed the gate again and went away from the garden of the fairy honeymouth carrying with them her great white egg and one of her great green nuts which of course they should never have done when they reached home they put the egg under their hen who had her nest beneath the front stairs and the peddler laid the great green nut upon the table and got out his hammer because he had decided to crack it bang bang he pounded the nutshell fell apart but instead of a kernel inside there on the table stood a strange little dwarf no bigger than your hand he wore a wig and red trousers and a hussar's jacket with big buttons quite tidy and complete he had a huge head and thin legs and such a wide mouth that it seemed as if his head would come in two he stepped out of the nutshell and yawned and jumping into a basket of nuts he began cracking them as fast as he could with his teeth but while this was happening there came a great cackling from under the front stairs where the hen had her nest the great white egg had hatched and out of it upon the floor hopped the daintiest little girl she wore little silk skirts and hose and dancing shoes her hair was all curled in rings and she picked up her petticoat and began whirling and dancing all around the room the hen went out to the barnyard in a tiff because she had hatched no chick but the peddler and his wife looked in wonder at the little dwarf cracking nuts with his huge mouth and the little lady in her dancing shoes flying about the floor then they whispered together and they said we have no children we will keep these little ones and they shall be our children and we will name them nutcracker and sugar dolly so that is how nutcracker and sugar dolly came in the first place and lived with the peddler and his wife how nutcracker ran away 
so nutcracker and sugar dolly lived at the peddler's house but the peddler soon found that he had a very bad bargain nutcracker was a naughty little dwarf all day long he did no good to anyone only mischief he got into the nuts that were ready to go to market and he cracked every one with his great mouth then he climbed the nut trees outside and threw shells at the people passing by when the peddler's wife tried to catch him with her broom out from under it he would slide and jump to the shelf and hide inside the clock or he would dance a little way ahead of the broom and make faces at the peddler's wife he had only two friends the great red barnyard cock who took him for rides about the garden and little sugar dolly whom he loved very dearly now sugar dolly was almost as much trouble as nutcracker for she would do no work and she could eat nothing but honey and sweets from the flowers and if she could not have all the flowers in the garden she would sit in a corner and cry it was nutcracker who brought her sweets and nutcracker who comforted her when she cried but at last when nutcracker had eaten all the nuts that were gathered in the house and all that grew in the garden he decided to run away for the peddler's house no longer amused him so early one morning he buttoned his little soldier jacket tightly about him hopped on the cock's back the cock spread his wings and they went over the wall and far far away nutcracker had decided to make a home for sugar dolly somewhere else how sugar dolly ran away the old peddler awoke in the morning and he found the house very very still no cock in the garden crowed and no little dwarf nutcracker was about rattling nuts and sugar dolly sat in a corner and cried all day long nor would she be comforted by all the sweets in the garden because nutcracker had gone away the old peddler took sugar dolly upon his knee and got down the sugar bowl for her to eat from but she still cried for many many days she sat in the chimney corner and grew more and more thin at last the white hen who had a nest beneath the front stairs took pity on sugar dolly and told her that nutcracker had gone away on the cock's back oh take me away too cried poor little sugar dolly so the white hen with sugar dolly on her back early one morning flew over the garden wall and across the meadow to find nutcracker at first they were not sure which way to go no one had seen nutcracker and the cock but one day they found one of the cock's red tail feathers by the roadside and a bit farther on they came to another and then when they had entered a deep deep wood they came to the cock himself strutting proudly about and gathering hazelnuts where oh where is my dear nutcracker asked sugar dolly of the cock that i do not know said the cock he climbed a great tree and that was the last i saw of him and when the white hen saw the cock she decided to go no farther so sugar dolly went on by herself to hunt for nutcracker the woods were very dark when it came night but sugar dolly carried a bright glowworm for a lantern in the morning she was asked to breakfast by some bees who fed her all the honey she could eat have you seen nutcracker a little dwarf in a red soldier's jacket she asked of the bees oh yes the bees had seen nutcracker but it had been many days before that he had passed by buzz 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 over grasses and flowers nutcracker has gone through the woods green bowers hummed the bees so sugar dolly hurried on she called to the birds as she went have you seen my nutcracker a little dwarf with thin legs and a very wide mouth and the birds sang back to sugar dolly pick 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 be quick be quick yonder nutcracker springs and rushes and rushes through the green bushes be quick be quick sugar dolly did hear a rustling but when she crept beneath the bushes to see she found only a squirrel who chattered and threw shells in her face poor little sugar dolly she called to the bluebells little bell flowers so blue did nutcracker pass you but the wind shook the bluebells and they answered not a word sugar dolly would have cried then if she had not come all at once upon the fairy palace of the queen rosebush the palace was made of green leaves with thorns at the corners to keep out the crickets and there came a sound of music and singing from inside is it a party asked sugar dolly of a gold bug it is a party said the gold bug i will take you in with me 
so sugar dolly went inside the palace with the gold bug and she saw the queen in a rose silk dress and a veil of spider's net sitting upon the throne and the young princesses in red and green puffed dresses sitting beside her the birds were the orchestra outside a wandering shepherd with his flock had stopped to listen to the music and the sheep had lost some of their wool on the sharp thorns so the birds who were not playing in the orchestra were gathering the bits of white wool for their nests and every one seemed very busy and very happy you may spend the night with us said queen rosebush graciously so sugar dolly slept in a pink rosebud all night and breakfasted from ambrosia in the morning and thanked the queen for her kindness and started once more to look for nutcracker as she went on her way through the forest she came to a singing brook and she sat down beside it to rest and she listened for the brook was singing to her as it flowed along its pebbles from mountains i come where the dwarfs have their home in the cave whence i spring nutcracker is king to him swiftly flee his queen thou shalt be i shall find my nutcracker i shall find my nutcracker said sugar dolly jumping up she ran and ran by the edge of the brook far far along as far as the brook flowed calling nutcracker nutcracker but no nutcracker answered at last she came to the place where the brook started from a deep cave and as she called nutcracker the rocks answered back nutcracker and that was all no little dwarf came out so sugar dolly sat down on the rocks very much discouraged and tired and after a while she fell fast asleep how sugar dolly became queen of the dwarves i do not know how long sugar dolly slept by the cave where the brook started but when she awoke there at her side underneath a water plant sat a little brown dwarf busily fishing for pearls he looked very much like nutcracker except for his mouth which was smaller and his jacket which was green instead of red good day little lady said the dwarf to sugar dolly and sugar dolly who was a polite little lady said good day in reply then the dwarf rolled up his net and put his pearls in the little sack that hung by his side and blew a shrill blast upon his tiny silver trumpet out from all the cracks and crevices of the rocks came other and still other little dwarfs and they joined hands and danced about sugar dolly and told her what a pretty little lady she was and they asked her to be their queen have you seen my nutcracker a little dwarf in red trousers asked sugar dolly then all the dwarves began shaking their little fists and stamping their little feet and scowling in a terrible rage nutcracker was a wicked king said one of the dwarves he ate all of our nuts that we had gathered for the winter said another he stole our bag of gold nuts said a third and he threw them into the brook because he broke his tooth trying to crack one we drove him away from our home said the first dwarf then sugar dolly began to cry but the dwarfs forgot their rage to see her so unhappy they brought her a tiny scepter and a glittering crown all set with jewels so sugar dolly decided to be their queen and sugar dolly was happier than she had been in a long time the dwarfs found a fairy baker who brought her every morning jars of honey and sugar rolls and sweet sweet cakes in his basket all she could eat the dwarfs made a set of tiny furniture for her a bed and a chair and a table of seashells inlaid with real gold and while the dwarfs were away all day at their work creeping into the cracks and holes of the earth for gold and silver and jewels sugar dolly did their housekeeping she dusted and polished their dishes and made their beds and she always had their tea brewed when they came home with their stores one day she found their gold nuts in the brook which made them very happy then at night the dwarves sat about their fire cross-legged on the floor warming their toes and they sang songs to sugar dolly upon her throne and they told her stories so after a while sugar dolly forgot to be lonely for nutcracker and she was very happy indeed being queen of the dwarves the adventures of nutcracker now all this time nutcracker was lost in the deep deep woods he had been most ungrateful and he had hidden himself in a tree because he wished all the nuts of the forest for his own little self and he wanted the cock who had been so very kind to him to go home again so the cock did go home as you know with the white hen after eating a great many hazelnuts and selfish little nutcracker was left alone with all the forest to wander about in 
for a while in the sunny pleasant weather nutcracker had a good time he climbed all the trees and sampled all the different sorts of nuts never before had he been able to eat all the nuts he wanted so he cracked hazelnuts and walnuts and butternuts and filberts and he made a pile of empty shells as high as a berry bush but alas the frosts came nutcracker's jacket and his red trousers were not warm enough for the chill nights and the keen frosty mornings he longed for the peddler's kitchen and the warm porcelain stove he wished to hide himself beneath the cock's wings or creep into the nest of the white hen under the front stairs but none of these things could nutcracker do for he had forgotten the way home at the foot of a large oak tree lived a great red squirrel who was chief of all the squirrels in the woods it was he who divided the forest into parts and every squirrel had his own trees and his own holes in which to live the red squirrel walked out often to see that no other squirrel gathered the nuts which belonged to his neighbor and he had a fine fur great coat which he wore to keep himself warm now nutcracker had seen the red squirrel and had admired his fur coat and had thrown nutshells at him and one night nutcracker went stealthily to the oak tree where the chief squirrel lived and he stole the fur coat while the squirrel was sleeping it exactly fitted nutcracker and he turned up the collar and danced about quite gaily but the chief squirrel awoke and missed his coat in a rage he sent word to all the squirrels of the forest to rise and make war upon nutcracker which they did they followed nutcracker wherever he went and took away his nuts his sword that was no bigger than a cambric needle was of no avail to drive them away he was obliged to hide under the dry leaves and he grew very very thin one day as he sat shivering and hungry he heard a sound of feet and a crunching upon the leaves a great four-legged creature nearly stepped upon him and as he cried out a boy whose dog it was that had frightened him came along and nutcracker told him all his troubles you shall go home with me said the boy we have a nut tree in the garden and you shall live in the chimney corner and be my playfellow so nutcracker went home with the boy and the dog and his troubles were over for a while at least how sugar dolly found nutcracker every evening sugar dolly queen of the dwarfs counted the little men as they sat about the fire to see if they had all come home and one night a little dwarf was missing so sugar dolly counted them all over again one two three yes one was certainly missing then all the other dwarfs ran about crying and wringing their hands and looking under the beds and beneath the tables and as they looked the door opened and in ran the little lost dwarf very much out of breath and tired he had a bundle of moss upon his back which he dropped upon the floor and he told them all how he had been gathering the moss from a castle hedge and how he had been attacked by a cat which charged him from the castle kitchen and the cat was driven by none other than nutcracker their old king oh cried sugar dolly may i not go to the castle may i not see my dear nutcracker i have been your queen for a long time may i not be released so the dwarfs saw that sugar dolly would be no longer happy with them in spite of the honey the gold furniture and the stories so they bowed their heads sadly and said yes to her but you must not go alone they said we will take you as far as the castle hedge and guard you from the cat and leave you there sugar dolly so early in the morning a wonderful procession set out for the castle at the head marched the dwarf who knew the way to the place where nutcracker had been seen behind marched four other dwarfs carrying sugar dolly on their shoulders and last of all came the rest of the dwarfs with their swords at their sides ready to attack the fierce cat but they did not meet the cat and they reached the lodge in safety there they set sugar dolly down very carefully and said good-bye to her very sadly for they were sorry indeed to lose their queen then sugar dolly crept under the castle hedge and hurried across the garden to the kitchen and tried the kitchen door but it was locked so she went in the cellar window and climbed the cellar stairs and many more stairs until she found herself in a great warm room there was a wide fireplace and a white bed where a little girl lay fast asleep as it was still early morning in the corner of the room there rose a little figure wearing a hussar's jacket and having a huge and wide mouth ah my dear nutcracker said sugar dolly running over to him with her arms spread wide my dear little sugar dolly cried nutcracker 
taking her tenderly in his arms just then the little girl awoke and sat up in bed and rubbed her eyes to see the little lady in her silk skirts and dancing shoes sugar dolly began to dance for joy and the little girl clapped her hands to see the little creature bobbing about the room such a tidy pretty little thing said the little girl you shall live with us and be my doll so that is how sugar dolly found nutcracker and they began living in the same house once more what happened to nutcracker and sugar dolly now you thought very likely that there was not to be another story and it did seem for a while as if nothing more were going to happen to nutcracker and sugar dolly the castle children loved sugar dolly dearly she sang them all the songs she had learned from the bees and the birds and the gold bugs she told them about the party at the palace of the fairy rosebush and her housekeeping in the cave of the dwarfs and nutcracker for once in his life was useful he was able to climb up to the high places in the garden and fetch down the toys when they were lost the hoop the ball and the shuttlecock so the children fed nutcracker all the nuts he could eat and sugar dolly all the sugar she wished and matters went very well for a while but after a little the time drew near to christmas in the corner cupboard of the castle playroom there was a mouse hole and through the mouse hole four weeks before christmas came the fairy honeymouth bringing chains of sugar corn and silver cobwebs and gold nuts for the christmas tree now the castle children never opened the door of the corner cupboard for they were proper mannered children and knew that they should not but nutcracker and sugar dolly grew very curious and because they had not good manners one night when the whole castle was asleep they opened the door of the corner cupboard they saw the gold nuts and the silver cobwebs and they found the mouse hole let us go through this dark passage said nutcracker and see where it ends we will said sugar dolly so the two squeezed themselves through the mouse hole and hurried along until they reached the end of the passage and there they found themselves in the most beautiful place the garden of their godmother the fairy honeymouth there was the same silver fence and the gold lattice gate the tree with great green nuts on one side and the sugar tree on the other the birds singing and sugar sugar everywhere they forgot all about the castle children who had been so kind to them nutcracker began pulling out the bird's tail feathers to stick in his cap he climbed the trees and shook down all the nuts sugar dolly filled her pockets and her shoes with sugar and began tearing up by their roots the sugar flowers don't do it don't do it sang the birds sadly as they had sung once before to the peddler and his wife but nutcracker and sugar dolly did not heed them they went on spoiling the garden then out of her palace in a rage came their godmother the fairy honeymouth naughty nutcracker naughty sugar dolly to run away so often said the fairy honeymouth she touched them with her wand you she said to nutcracker shall be turned to wood and crack nuts all your life but never eat another and to sugar dolly she said you shall be turned to a sugar doll and that is what happened to nutcracker and sugar dolly upon christmas morning the castle children opened the door of the corner cupboard oh the wonder of it all the old toys were gone and new ones stood in their places in glittering splendor stood the christmas tree hung with sugar chains and silver cobwebs and gold nuts and listen on the tip top of the tree stood sugar dolly her hair still curled her skirt still outspread and she was still wearing her dancing shoes but her hair and her skirts and her shoes were made of pink sugar and beneath sugar dolly his great head peering out from the branches his jacket tidily buttoned and his wide mouth open ready to crack the christmas nuts that he might never eat hung nutcracker all made of wood the news reached the cock who lived in the peddler's barnyard and he mounted to the highest church steeple in town to try to see what had become of his old friend nutcracker and the cock stands there still blown by all the winds of heaven for he was not able to climb down again and when the nights are chill and frost flies when the storms beat against the window-pane little children sit by the fire and tell the true stories of nutcracker and sugar dolly who had so many adventures and who will hang on the christmas tree as long as children believe in fairies end of section twenty seven recording by candace delic dallas texas